Are you near broke and unsure how to pay your student loans off? Don't worry. Here's a guide on how you can pay back your student loans right now. Whether you've graduated or you're still studying, you need to pay your student loans as fast as you can to avoid any future financial problems. This is how you can do it. My name is Manif Ali and I became a self-made multimillionaire in my early 20s. I've built multiple brick and mortar businesses with billions of dollars in sales behind me. I started making videos to share my life experiences and teach others how to become more successful in life and in business. If you like the type of content that I'm giving you, go ahead and smash that subscribe button, like the video and share it with people who might find this video helpful. One way to reduce your student loan debt is always choosing a federal loan instead of a private loan. Compared to private entities, the federal government can provide more and better services. These perks include subsidized loans, grace periods, deferments, forbearance, income-driven repayment plans, and student loan forgiveness. Private lenders are also far less willing to allow you to prorate your payments. Since you're the one who's committed for that $100,000 loan, it's your responsibility to pay it back. They don't care what you're eligible for, if you've taken a federal loan, or how good of a student you are. What they really want is their money back. And the most a private lender will give you is a grace period of about six months. Otherwise, you have to ask your family or organizations to help you pay your debt. If you choose a private loan, you can have an option to have a co-signer such as your parents. Having a co-signer student loan means that your parent or whoever co-signed will have to get involved. And if you're unable to pay the loan, guess what? The lender will collect from your parents instead. Not only is this embarrassing if this happens when you miss a payment, but it will also affect their credit history and yours. I bet you don't want any collector bothering your parents or loved ones. Make sure that you can pay these on time if you choose that type of loan. If you think it is an inevitable situation, then the best way to handle this is by talking to your parents or co-signers and being honest about your situation. It's important that both you and your parent agree on how you're going to handle the loan to avoid any of you getting hit by your creditor. And you'll be likely to come up with realistic income expectations to address the debt as well. While you're in school and you started to earn some money, start paying your student loans as soon as you possibly can. Save a little bit of money from every paycheck to reduce your total debt and minimize the impact to your loan's interest in the future. Not only will this help you after graduation, but you have more opportunities to earn and save more money later. Federal loans offer you two kinds of choices, subsidized loans and unsubsidized loans. Subsidized loans means that the federal government will pay your loan's interest while you're studying and have a grace period. And any payments that you make will chip away directly at your principal balance. Meanwhile, an unsubsidized loans do not offer the option to have your interest covered by the federal government. That means that you'll be paying all the interest rate on your student loan accruals, and that will be difficult for you as any interest accumulated will be added to your principal balance. An unsubsidized loan does not offer you the option of having your interest covered by the federal government. This means that you'll be paying for all of the interest that your student loans accrue. This will be difficult for you as any interest accumulated will be added on to your principal balance. If you have an unsubsidized loan, try to pay off the interest at least so that you can reduce your total debt and make your student loans more manageable in the future. Either way, both will be benefited by you making early payments. The other option that you can also consider is to pay your student loan while you're in school are work study programs and becoming a resident assistant working during the summer, paid internships and scholarships. Ask your school or your local government if they offer any of these type of programs. Just a quick break, I'm really excited about sharing this news with you. I'm giving away a free ebook on money management. If you sign up with the link down below, you get to receive a free PDF copy of my book. I've compiled all the best resources on money management, especially for millennials and younger who want to try to become future millionaires. To make sure you grab a copy, in full disclosure, it's absolutely free. I'm gonna give you a ton of value and I want nothing in return, but maybe your email. And if you like the type of content that I'm giving you, go ahead and please apply a little bit of liberal pressure to that like and subscribe button and let me and the algorithm know that this video is valuable to you and I'll continue to make you content like this each and every week. So make sure you turn on that notification bell as well so when I come out with a video, you'll be informed. Take advantage of your grace periods. Grace periods are set periods of time to allow you to look for a job before you need to start paying your student loans. The grace periods vary, but it's mostly about six months. And generally speaking, it begins during your graduation, but you can use it sooner by doing some part-time enrollment or leaving school entirely for a semester. Just be careful when you use your grace period because most of the time you only have one. 
you already graduated and started working, some people will move out to a city where the cost of living is more bearable. They'll live there temporarily until they can pay off their student loan debt. It's also always advisable to cut expenses to a minimum and try getting side jobs to pay for that loan quickly. If the federal government sees that you're struggling to make payments, they will allow you to stop making payments on your student loans. This can either be a deferment or a forbearance. A deferment is when the government allows you to stop temporarily making payments. And they may even subsidize your loan's interest. A forbearance, on the other hand, also temporarily stops you from making payments or at least reduces what you need to pay for up to 12 months. But interest will continue to pile up even if you're paying off a subsidized loan. Just remember, both are temporary and only last for 12 months to 36 months and you need to give proof of your financial needs, job loss, illness, military duty, etc. and an enrollment into the program by your loan provider. You can also try income-driven repayment plans to help you adjust your payments for your loans. Just apply for the Federal Direct Consolidation Loan and they'll offer several repayment plans adapted to your income to help you cushion your finances. One example is the PAYE or pay as you earn. You can just pay 10% of your income as long as your monthly payments is lower than that of the standard 10-year repayment plan. Suppose you've been following these rules already, but still experience financial difficulty. Apply for a Public Service Loan Forgiveness, or PSLF. This program allows you to do public service work for 10 years. After that, your remaining balance will be forgiven. For those who are interested, follow these steps. Consolidate your student loans, get an income-driven repayment plan, make 10 years worth of payments for 120 payments and make sure you're eligible to work for the government or for an eligible nonprofit organization. Then you'll have to submit the proper paperwork each year. And if you find this too meticulous, you can always check with your state to see if they offer any student debt forgiveness programs or with your school. So those are several ways that you can pay your student loans or at least reduce them. I hope that you can use at least one or two of these plans to help you get rid of student loan debt. And if you have any thoughts or questions, please comment down below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. I'm never gonna tell you not to go to college. I know there are some people, some financial gurus out there telling you to ditch college completely, but that's not what I recommend because it's an experience. You get a whole lot of other things. It's not just always a financial decision, but also learn to pick schools that are not going to kill you in debt. And student loans are becoming and continuing to be a major financial burden on most people as college rates or as college tuition gets higher and higher. So be mindful of your spending. And just because you got into the best schools doesn't mean you have to always go there. Think about the money you're going to earn and the money your parents are going to have to provide and make wise decisions that matter not based on prestige but based on logic. In any way, paying your student loans off does impact your credit score in history and will impact your financial wherewithal later on. Make sure you make your payments on time as there are ways for you to lessen the burden. If you need more guidance regarding credit itself, I made a great video on the five simple steps to improve your credit score quickly. Go ahead and check that video out right now.